The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, the new productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. I'm in Minnesota. It's supposed to be springtime, and we just had Easter, Easter egg hunt, in the snow. I have adult children. You'd think they would have followed the Easter Bunny's footprints to find all the eggs. They didn't. But, oh my gosh, welcome to the F word. It is April 3rd. Hey, Mother Nature, get a clue. It's April. No more snow. We have schools closed. This is ridiculous. I'm sick of it. F that. Welcome again to the F Word Show. This is Kathy. And uh, I don't know where Toriano is. I think he's back in the country, but he might be a little jet lagged. He's been in Spain. But you know what? That's okay because I've got a really good friend. I'm really happy to be able to call him a friend. We've been doing a lot of planning and conversating and introducing and all kinds of great things. But Ryan Brown, welcome back to the F Word. Always fun to be around. I, I love the F Word. I know, I know. And you know, you know, another F word is French. So when I say pardon my French, that's literally another F word, if you think about it, right? That is true. It is an F word. <laughs> it is. So anyway, um, I wanted to bring you back on tonight, and thank you so much for making yourself available for me, because, the, you know, I'm going to go through a lot of different things, but Rush University in Chicago, the Road Home Program, you know, we talked about that, you know, you and Toriano and I, and that was, you know, like our first show, yep. but um, it's time to come back and, and hear, you know, number one. What's going on with the service pets for vets? Because, you know, you know that's a passion of mine. We know that's a passion of Toriano's, and he's over there working with the dogs. I think right now, the last I heard. Yeah. But um, tell me, tell me what's going on. How many vets do you have in the program right now? Uh, I think we're at thirty-two vets right now, and we've got a couple more that we're screening to bring in. So probably be at the thirty-six-ish. Wow. Oh my gosh. So about thirty six yep. end of the month. Yep. Um okay, so Toriano has how many dogs getting ready to go out right now? Uh Toriano has fourteen dogs over at the center well, thirteen dogs. One dog went home with their owner. Oh. Uh, needs to come yeah, needs to come back and do a little bit of finish up training. Uh but thirteen dogs right now. Okay, so and I think you had mentioned to me April 15th there was going to be a bunch more going home. Yep. Uh, that's when they're going to take their final test, uh, the canine good citizen. Oh and then we are going to send them home with their veterans. And after that, we're going to do some follow-up training to kind of tune them in with the veterans, make sure they uh, do exactly what the veteran needs because everybody's a little different. Right. But, they're, yeah, they're going to be pretty much finished at that time. Now, you've been telling me that you go and check on them on a regular basis. Yes. And are, are they all puppies? Uh, Athena is a puppy. She's about four months old right now. Oh, my gosh. And she's a Rottweiler puppy. So I've she seen is, pictures of her. Oh, my gosh. She's really cute, isn't she? Mm-hmm. She's also about 30 pounds and four months old. So she's going to be a very large dog. Oh, but wow. she is super sweet, and she loves everybody, so... Well, let's hope super cool. with because of her training, she will <laughs> stay that way, right? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get on the wrong side of a Rottweiler. No, you don't. It's a bad thing. Because <laughs> it wasn't that Cuj- Cuj- wasn't Cujo. Oh no, Cujo yeah. was a Saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, still a huge dog. So yeah. You know, uh, I think it's doing very well. She'll be very social with everybody, and she'll love everybody. Oh my and gosh. Then we, then we got a couple guys who uh, were given up by their owners. I think they're brothers. And they're both four-year-old Labradoodles. And Aww. those guys are pretty sweet, too. Mm-hmm. You mentioned and, that 
somebody was looking for a Labradoodle specifically, right? So is that who one of them is going to? Um, actually, not Labradoodle, a Golden Doodle. Golden yeah, Doodle, client. that's right. Yeah. Okay. Another client's looking for a Golden Doodle. Um, hey, yeah, everybody, if anybody has a rescue Golden Doodle, I can't even say mm-hmm. the word, Golden Doodle, it's because it's not an F word. Um, a furry, right. a furry friend. There we go. Right. Um, <laughs> um, let it, let me know. Get a hold of me. You know, go to you know the F word. Go to you know see me on you know Facebook. Send me a message. But if you know anybody, or contact Ryan at yeah, contact you at uh, R Y A N underscore Brown at Rush dot edu at Rush dot edu. Exactly. So, I mean, if you have any dogs like that, that literally um, need a home, I mean, yeah. give them a call. Talk to them. I, I know I've got a couple that are donated, so we need to get you in touch with Merjan Flowers, F word, because um, <laughs> uh, he's a fighter, another F word. Nice. I have fun saying all the F words. I, I can say I'm single. I can say all the F words I want. I have no kids in my house. So any F word I want to say, I get to say, no soap in my room when I'm talking. But, um, so, okay, so you've got those two. What are the other ones? So you've got two four-year-olds. We have two four-year-olds. Uh, we've got Athena, the little one. Mm-hmm. We've actually got a French bulldog, so F word on that one. French, again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see, we've got a uh, Labrador. Uh, Black Lab with one of our pets. We've got a couple of months that one's really sure what they are. Oh. Well, yeah, but they're super cute and super friendly, and their vets absolutely love those too. Oh, that's so oh, that's so cool. So mm-hmm. here's my question. So yeah. when you just said you've got a couple more vets that you're talking to, what what is it that you need to look for? Because you know I have somebody in mind, too. But what is it that you look for in the vet and their needs? I mean, because there's dogs, you know, if you've got a vet that's got, um, you know, special needs, like they can't, you know, open a door or something. I mean, there's dogs that are trained to do that. What What's going on with the vets in this particular program, and what how are you matching the dogs to them? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the and a stable place uh, so they can take care of the dog. Okay. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, right. where it goes. Right, you're not living uh, in your car. Yeah. Right. Right. And unfortunately, uh, that's what that do. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. and it does happen, unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, some people could really benefit from a vet, uh, mm-hmm. dog, but not in the right place for it. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is we got to make sure the vet understands that the dog is not the solution. I mean, right. the, the dogs are part of the solution and they help you be more social. In fact, you kind of have to be more social when you have the dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, if you have a really cute dog, people are just going to want to talk to your dog or talk about your dog. And right. if you have PTSD, you don't want to talk to people. You want to kind of draw yourself in. Right. But the dog's like, well, we got to go out anyway. So, uh, yeah, you're coming along. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that really helps them with the social aspect. Um, big thing is, since the dog's not the solution, you still have to go to therapy. And you have to have, you know, somebody you're seeing on a regular basis. So I'm not a clinician, so I can't tell you how long, how often a regular basis is. Right. But, you know, usually at least once a month you're going to your therapist and you're talking about what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. If not more often. Wow, and you're bringing the dog with you. I mean, these you're dogs can the dog go with. because they're considered a service dog. They they get the little vests that they wear. They get the little vests, yeah. And there's all kind of regulations you have to follow. But yeah, your service dog is once a proper service animal, it can go anywhere with you. Right. In fact, you kind of have to take them with you mm-hmm. by the rules. Um. So assuming they do those three things, they're going to do an interview with myself and then with Toriano. Uh huh. And we just kind of want to make sure that they understand all the things things that are going to have to happen. Um, you know, they're still dogs. They're still three wake up calls when it's snowing outside in the middle of January. Or the 
before the beginning of April, like my dog before did this morning. April. My dog did it at 3 a.m. this morning, and I went, what? No. What? <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, I guess I need no. to watch the news more often and pay attention to the weather. But no. Oh, you might want to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think it's going to snow in, like, July. Like, oh. July 2nd, still going to snow. Like, <laughs> you think? July 2nd. What's they special about plan. that day? I'm tossing that out there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so how long is the program itself for training the dogs? Um, <clears throat> so there's no hard and fast date. Like, I, there's no, like, uh, you know, 30 days you're kicked right. out. Right, no. We train the dog until we feel the dog's ready for the vet, and the vet feels the dog is ready for that vet. So it can be, you know, 60 days. Right, or 90 days. It can, be, it can be 90 days. It can be six months if it needs to be that. So I had a dog named Sam. He was a Samoyed. So how original of me, Sam the Samoyed. Um, I took him. I took him to doggy school. It was a couple of my girlfriends and I. We all had puppies. Sam was the oldest. He was a year, and the other ones were younger. And he was one of those, you know, sled dogs. They say like to run. So if he'd get off yeah. his chain, he was gone. Well. We went to, to doggy school. We went and we went and we went. And the day of graduation, I went home to, you know, let him go potty. And he, I was practicing the, you know, sit and stay. And he took off on me. And had, him, and had him all groomed. And he ran through the weeds. And he got burrs in his fur. And I, oh, I was so upset. And we went to graduation. And the only thing that we didn't pass was me. Returning to him on the wrong side. It's like, it's like, he did perfect. But, uh, yeah, except for I was, I, it might have been because I was so frazzled from trying to catch him. But right. uh, having to take him, but it was so funny. But he, he even looked at me like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to go there. Not on that side. That was the only thing we got marked down on. But um, that wasn't, yeah, I think that was like probably a six-week puppy course kind of deal. But so they know how to, you know, walk and, and heal yeah. and, and all that. But there's so many behavioral things, too, with specific uh -huh. breeds of dogs. Like my, you can hear barking on the other side of my door. My my dachshund, I mean, they're naughty. They just get into things. And it's like, how do I teach you not? I mean, I've had dog trainers that I've talked to, and they're like, don't put, them, don't put a bark collar on them. Teach them to not bark. I'm like, how do you teach a dog not to bark? You can do right. it. Like, um, I, I have no idea. So seriously. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't know. It's That's like, right. don't, no, stop. They still bark. Right. So. That's why I hired Toriano. He knows what to do, so. Yeah. I'm like, geez, just talking about bark, please. So. Well, right. And I went by his house, and I heard, well, his dog was doing his job in the house upstairs <clears> barking. <throat> so, I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what they're supposed to do. But when they just bark. You know, at the doorbell on TV or bend. I don't know, I don't know how to stop that. So, okay. Well, well, now that you mention it, that's one of the things we treat, teach some of the dogs. Um, so, like when your dog's barking, mm -hmm. you know, somebody comes to the door, your dog barks, it might startle you, right? And you're a little bit like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Right, it so does. I do get vets, scared sometimes. Cause I'm yeah. Myself. So some of the vets, when they hear that, it doesn't startle them a little bit. It really elevates them. It kind of triggers them. Yeah, it does. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So then they get excited. Now, the dog's like, oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, pack leaves are not, I guess I should be excited, too. So they start barking more. Uh -oh. And that triggers the vet even more. So, you know, you have this cycle going on. And it's like, how do you break it? Mm -hmm. So that's why one thing we may train the dogs to do, you know, bark less or bark in a more appropriate fashion. Or, you know, just not bark at all. Wow. So, yeah. So we can help the vets out in that fashion. So, there you go. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I need I need to come down there and... and <laughs> yeah, come down like, to Chicago. Come down, Chicago, that's right. <laughs> Bring the wiener dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Well, and then socializing the dogs, too, is really important. So you're training them all in a group setting, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. I mean, did the vets become friends? Did they know each other before the program, or...? They don't know each other before the program, so we try to keep the vets all in A class together, uh -huh. at least for the first few classes, so they kind of, vets just kind of know other vets, and they kind of feel a little bit more comfortable around each other. 
Right. So that's part of the socialization for the veterans. So we start to break them in a little class, and then we might invite other people to the class and civilians slowly. Uh-huh. And so now they're like, oh, you know, the civilians aren't as bad as I thought they were. But we just break them in slowly. And yeah, they do usually become friends and really kind of train with each other and start little competitions to see whose dog's acting, picking up the tricks a little bit more quickly, things like, like that. I like it. I like it. And then they go, like, to the dog parks and... They go to the dog park and we go to, like, the grocery store. We take the dogs to the grocery store or the train station's a big one. Um, any place you would go out in town normally, the dogs have to be kind of acclimated to those places. So, like, the airport's a huge one. Um, no one really has fun at the airport. <laughs> And don't I go mean, on United and put your dog in the baggage compartment. Right. Yeah. Like, wow. Who does that? Right? Mm-mm. Seriously. <laughs> but we take them to, you know, like the airport because if you're in line and you're waiting and everybody's freaking out and then you start freaking out and then the dog starts freaking out. So when we take them to the airport, the dogs start to learn that, you know what, people are just going to be elevated here. There's no reason to worry about it. So they're used to it. So we do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. That, I mean, so what brought about the idea for the program at Rush with the Road Home Program? Because I'm, I want to get more background on the Road Home Program because it's not just about the pets and the vets. It's no. always about the vets. But what mm-hmm. what brought the dog program around? Um, so know? the dog program in particular, um, a very generous family who actually prefers I don't use their name, uh, in Chicago, uh-huh. um, came to us one day, and their name is on the side of a lot of buildings, but the matriarch of the family is very much an animal lover. So she came to us and she said, we would like to start a program for animals, um, particularly service dogs, to work with the veterans. And tell us what you guys think. So... I mean, zero clue what we were doing. We wrote up a ridiculous proposal. We didn't need to actually think this was going to work. Right. And we turned it in. And they looked at us and they said, okay, let's do it. And we signed a contract like two weeks later. Oh, wow. Right? It was like one of those angelic things. They were singing and all that great stuff. And we're just like, okay, what do we do now? Um, yeah, because we have a fairly good amount of money. And then we're like, we started looking around, and we found some dog trainers. And this was all about a year ago, and our first class started, uh, yeah, a year ago, two days ago. So April first, oh wow, twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's been exactly a year now. Oh my gosh, it's been exactly a year. And you said how many dogs? Um, we're working on. We have thirty one right now, maybe thirty two. Okay. And by the end of the month, we should have thirty six. Okay. What a blessing. What a blessing uh, they are. Absolutely. And then so, they did. They stipulated that it's uh, vets in Chicago or in Illinois. Right? In Illinois. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that. Uh, yeah. And they have to be road home clients, so we do ask them to come visit us. And, you know, at least uh, prefer a couple visits, you know, kind of figure out where you're at. Um, but... If you're already seeing a clinician, we kind of, I don't say, we don't ask that you drop your old clinician to pick us up. Right. You know, that's just unfair to you and your old clinician. So we actually just come in for a couple of visits say, make sure you kind of wear, you really got PTSD or TBI just to kind of ensure. Because, right. you know, unfortunately, there's those people that wouldn't, that would try to take advantage of the system. I know. That's about it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, seriously, I think that's... Had, were they a family that had donated before and then just all of a sudden decided, hey, we want to do this instead? Yeah, they they have a lot of donations around the town, around the town, and um, so far it's all been buildings, <clears throat> like really large buildings. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, so this, this is actually their first program, so kind of their first living thing, if you will. You know what? And that, I know I said this last week, but philanthropy, I almost said it wrong, kind of feels like an F word. <laughs> so, right? 
my friend, my friend Mike can make fun of me again. But no, I mean, that's <clears throat> being able to give back and do something, especially for the vets that make it possible, like yourself, Ryan, that make it possible for us to just be sitting here talking on the radio. Um, and I know Armed Radio Global, uh, Joe Savino, Jim Bell, they are so awesome to have this. I mean, they reach 66 countries. We've got, we've got vets all over the world that listen to Armed Radio Global. So it's nice knowing that when they want to transition back to civilian life, They've got a program like Road Home Program. So what I want to ask you now is <clears throat> a little bit of history of the Road Home Program. And um, so I want to hear about that first, how it became a part of Rush University. Okay. I know, so, look at me, history. Teach me. <laughs> All right, so Road Home Program actually started over at Harvard University. And the reason it started at Harvard is uh, the founder of Road Home actually started another program called Home Base at Harvard. His name is Dr. Mark Pollitt. Um, I believe he was the chair of psychiatry over, or a chair of psychiatry over at Harvard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Pollitt's brother is an Army vet. Um, and he came back from Iraq. And Dr. Pollitt, being a psychiatrist, being very well qualified, having years of experience, saw his brother, he said, you have PTSD. Um, but, unfortunately, he couldn't treat his brother because conflict of interest, right. but not. So he looked around for a program that would be able to assist his brother. He couldn't find one. What? Right? How long, so ago, how long ago was that? Uh, I think 2006-ish. Okay, it sounds about right. Don't quote me on that one. Yeah. It's right around that time frame. Yeah. So Dr. Pollock decided he would start a program that could assist veterans with PTSD. And that's how Home Base uh, got started. Well, um, Rush University went uh, at some point decided they wanted to hire Dr. Pollock. Um, and they made an offer, and the story goes that Dr. Pollock said, I will go to Rush, and I will chair your psychiatry department under one condition, or probably more than one condition, but at <laughs> least one condition. Right. And that condition is that you allow me to start a program like Home Base over at Rush. Wow. And, and this is about 2013, 2014. Okay. Of course, Rush said, yeah, you can do that if you'd like. And that's when we started to run, well, when he started the Road Home Program. Wow. Okay, so home base is still at Harvard? Home base is still at Harvard. So uh, Road and, Home is at Rush. Okay. Operation Mend is at UCLA. And Emory also has a program. Wow. What, I mean, what an angel he is. Right. So then, now do the four organizations team up, work together on anything, or, or what are the differences, I guess? Well, we definitely team up and work on a lot of things. So we're all part of what's called the Warrior Care Network. Okay. And that's a subsection of Wounded Warriors. So, oh, wow. Okay. And right. everybody's sort of Wounded Warriors. I mean, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. I know so many people that have supported them. I actually have four Wounded Warrior magnets on my fridge as we speak. Nice. Yeah. Right? So if you want to think of WCN as the medical branch of Wounded Warrior, okay. that's a good way to put it. So that's what we do. Okay. And each of us has kind of, mm -hmm. we each take veterans, and each of us kind of has a specialty. Okay. I mean, not like we won't take vets from other programs, but more of a focus, let's say. Right. So you have to have that. You can't. You kind of have to. Yeah. And I mean. There's a lot of medical issues out there, and we can't all do this, all of them. Right. So, so for instance, Harvard or uh, Home Base kind of specializes in traumatic brain injuries. Okay. So if you have a more severe traumatic brain injury, and you go through WCN, okay. you're probably going to go through Harvard or okay. Operation Med. I'm sorry, Home Base. Home Base. If you're a burn victim or an amputee, uh -huh. you're definitely going to go to Operation Mend, which is UCLA. Okay. Um, so if you suffer, suffered a military sexual trauma experience or you're pre-9-11, you're going to come to Road Home Program. Okay. 
Okay. And Emory kind of takes the overflow, uh -huh. but they also do a lot of research. So, wow. But that's not to say that if you just have regular, quote unquote, regular PTSD, you're not going to go to one of those programs. Right. It's just that if you have one of those conditions, you're going to be routed to a certain program preferentially. How do vets, as you know, I have one in particular that I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do they get to your programs? I mean, does the VA recommend it? You can get recommended by a VA liaison. We definitely have some VA liaisons recommend us to people. Okay. You can call us directly. Um, we definitely have that happen. Uh -huh. You can have, um, if you know an alumni, they can recommend you and they can send you over to us. Okay. You can go to WCN or WWP and say, hey, I've heard about this program. Can you tell me more? And when the warrior can send you over there, over to us. So there's a lot of ways that come on through our program. Wow. So if somebody, okay, so fundraising obviously is one of the things that makes all of this happen. Yes. And, um, you know, that's an area that <laughs> F word philanthropy department, who I'm excited yeah. to get to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> When when somebody wants to send money and they want to donate, so can they go to Wounded Warriors and say they want if they donate money to Wounded Warriors, it's not going to go to Rush, right? It's going to Wounded Warriors. It'll go to Wounded Warrior, but Wounded Warrior does fund us in a lot. So indirectly, it might come to Rush. It might go. It's going to go in. As far as I know, it will go into their big pool. Right. And, you know, maybe X and L Sense will come out to Rush. Right. But I can't guarantee that I give $100 to Wounded Warrior, they're going to give $100 to Rush. Right. Exactly. Sorry. I think they give, if you give $100, they, I mean, they have to take some out for them. Yeah. So right. it would be. So if people, you want the money to go to Rush, to the Road Home mm -hmm. Program, your best bet is to go. To your website, roadhomeprogram.org, correct? Yes. And <clears throat> the money, I mean, and on the website, it shows the different programs. I noticed when I was on there last time, I, I don't think I saw, you know, the service pets yet. But that's we because it's specific, because you already have right. it set up with the family, correct? Right. Um, yeah. So we don't put the service dog program on there because we would get flooded with requests for service dogs oh, I bet. from all over the nation. And then I'd be like, tell me a lot of people, you don't qualify for you, a dog. Oh, and you'd have to, I know, and turning people away, that would be so hard. Because it, it and you have really to be difficult. realistic because, I mean, you can't, right. I mean, you just can't flood tons of people right. into it. I mean, you can only train so many vets and so many dogs at one time. Exactly, and the requirement that they be, you know, Illinois vets, and, you know, in therapy, and, you know, that you're ready for a dog, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, tell me what else you do, then. Like, what's, what's a day in the life? Now, where's your specialty lay, for example? Um, so... <clears throat> one of the outreach coordinators so uh, when people ask me what I do I literally tell them I get to go to parties all the time and I play with dogs oh my god what a fun <laughs> yeah I like it right like so I told that to the vice presidents over the hospital they're like really that's what you do we're mm -hmm. gonna have to evaluate um, but then I have to explain <laughs> that yes. my job really is to go to parties and talk about the program or you know go on radio shows or TV mm -hmm. shows or Go to parades. Because, folks, not only does he have a face for radio, he has a face for TV. TV. I don't know why I can't talk tonight. TV? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Teva. 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 Oh, my God. I couldn't uh, say MMA earlier either. MMA. MMA. <laughs> so, TV. Nice. I'm going to be made fun of again. Yep. It's okay. 
Right. Okay, so you're going to these parties, you're going on the radio, you're going on TV. Um, yep. Okay. I also do like peer support because since I am a vet. Right. Thank you. Uh, you know. Everybody wants to thank you for your support and supporting us as a nation. Because, no man, we know. Um, it, it's not easy. I, w- I want to hear your story, too. I, I mean, there's people that didn't hear you the first time. So we're going to want to hear your story, story. too. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting, for sure. Um, but, you know, peer support. So sometimes the vets just want to talk. Right. They don't want to talk to the clinician. I mean, uh-huh. sometimes... My clinicians will undoubtedly kill me about this, but sometimes you just don't want to talk to them. They're kind of boring, and they really don't understand. Right. So, and also, you know, sometimes you just want to blow off some steam and stuff, being right. go through therapy. So, uh, myself and the other uh, outreach coordinators are there as peer support. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because we've been there, and we understand what it's like. So there's that. Um I also teach, I get to guest lecture the medical students over at Rush, which is kind of a treat. Wait, what? You do? Yeah. I love it. I do. Okay, tell me about so that. every year, um, the <laughs> medical students That's an effort Rush, for fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. It is fun. Like, I get to put down my resume that I lectured medical students. I mean, come on now. Um, and actually, if you want to hear the F word, go to one of my lectures. Apparently, you're not supposed to use the F word, that Oops. particular F word, oh. at the medical college. Um, they probably should have told me that before I did my first lecture, because <laughs> I dropped it like six times. Whoops. Yeah, well. Oh, well. Yeah. Do you know that so, this well. this show is labeled explicit, probably because of the F word content. <laughs> Correct me, so, but I never say the actual F word. Um, that's kind of a bummer. I know. Um, so, yeah, I do that. Um, I also do some case management, case management style work. Okay. So, when... We bring the vets in. We, of course, want to make sure they get to go when they go home. I mean, you know, you got to have some resources. Right. Like if we give you yoga when you come visit us for three weeks. We want to give you a uh, yoga class back home. Right. Or financial assistance or, you know, it can be just like, hey, I have no idea how to work with a VA. And we'll find you. We'll talk to the VA for you or help you talk to the VA. Mm-hmm. So we do a little bit of that. Um, you know, that's a lot of what we've got. Wow. No, so, okay, but what about the families? Because now, you know, with my experience, I I never got any any help. I didn't. So, I mean, my ex said, well, you didn't go over there. You don't, you don't get anything. But, you know, we should because we need to learn. Because maybe he wouldn't be my ex, you know? Right. So we definitely help the families. We have a whole team kind of dedicated to families. Okay. Um, and it can be, so when we bring somebody in, when we say outpatient, um, well, the name of the Road Home Program is the Road Home Program, the Center for Veterans and Their Families right. at Rush University. So um, if a family member says, you know what? I need some therapy. Okay, come on in. We've got a family team for you. Um, we've got peer-to-peer counselors for our family team. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my coworkers is a gold star mother, so she certainly understands what a lot of families are going through. I can't wait to meet her. She's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, another one of my coworkers is a military spouse. Her husband was active army for eight years. Um, let's see, you know, one of the family team members is actually a reserve chaplain, and she's been in 20 plus years. Oh, wow. hmm And we have child psychologists and child psychiatrists mm. on the family team. So, you know, if your 10-year-old is having a really hard time adjusting to your veteran coming back from deployment. Right. Because... You know, life doesn't stop when you go on deployment, no, and, you know, kids change, and, you know, the rules are a little different. You can certainly bring them in, and they can talk to one of the clinicians, and kind of learn to understand or help. The clinician can help them to understand why daddy or mommy is acting different, and how we can kind of get back to, quote-unquote, normal. 
Right. Uh, we also do couples counseling. Oh my so, god! You know, yeah. Yeah. That's like, that. I mean, that's so important. It really is. I mean, one of the tenets of Road Home is that we can't just help the vet because it's not just the vet. It's the veteran and their family. And their friends. Yeah. I mean, people need and to know. Friends. Well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we need to know. I mean, because I remember just being like, oh my God, what's his problem? You know, 4th of July, fireworks right. going off. I mean, and he's, you know, looking for, Probably. you know, trembling yeah. under a bed. You know, and I mean, you get it. But you don't know it until it actually happens. And so people need to know that there are things. There was somebody that I worked with that was a vet. Um, he And he had an episode because somebody dropped their keys or something. He said it sounded just like somebody pulling um, a grenade. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, whatever they just did. I mean, and he literally, like, hit the floor. And it was, oh, yeah. And... I mean, it was, it's just sad. I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of things that trigger him, and I, I adore him and thank him so much for what he did. He's one of the most interesting men, but he, you know, he's had to pay a lot of heavy prices for, you know, what he did for us. Right. Wow. And we've, just, we've definitely had family members come through, and so when we invite the vets over for three weeks, uh-huh. the last week of that three weeks, we invite their family members in. Oh, wow. And we talk to the family members completely separately from the vets. And the family members learn to say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's not me. Maybe I'm not the crazy one here. Not that the vet's crazy. No one's crazy. But when you see your family member, your loved one, act in the way you think, like, that's really not normal. And you're beginning to wonder, well, I do something to cause this problem right. or this action. And we help these family members learn that, no, it's not you. And that's not crazy. It's just they're reacting to their experience. And here's how you can help them work through. Exactly. I mean, and that's exactly what I wanted. What? But, but I was told there was nothing back then. So it, it's uh, easy to think of. Because, yeah, that is what, wow, 16 years ago. And there there really wasn't, I mean, at least I didn't know of it, anything much going on back then. There really wasn't a lot back then. For families, then. yeah. Yeah. No, because. now, yeah. families are kind of, you know, it can be difficult to find. Well, okay, so, Ryan, for the people that are wondering, mm-hmm. I mean, how, do, how I mean, does it go based on income? How does that work? Oh, um, for our three program or any of the programs that I have. Any, uh, of, any of the programs, like if, if the family needs to come. I mean, because, you know, uh, mom or dad would have to take a week uh, off of work probably. So, uh, I mean, how does that work? I mean, is there cost levels? Uh, so, um, the requirements for a home for the veteran are that you serve one day in service. That's the complete requirements. Okay. So, uh, if you went to boot camp and, you know, three days and you said, you know what, I'm out, and you actually got out, one, I'm kind of amazed you managed to do that. <laughs> right. Two, um, yeah, you're still qualified for services at Road Home. Oh, wow. So that, yeah. Um, then we're not going to charge it. We don't charge anybody for anything there. Ever. Not what? In, okay. Income requirements or, you know, we're not going to say, hey, we're going to bill your insurance. We don't bill your insurance at all. You can donate if you'd like, but we're never going to ask you. It's simply not something we do. So when the families come down there, do they have a place to stay, too? Mm-hmm. And that's in a place called the Illinois Medical District Guest House. We have our own floor. Oh. Uh, and they're actual apartments. They're actually pretty nice apartments, for that matter. Um, they're one- and two-bedroom apartments, full kitchen, uh, living room, uh, TVs, couches, all the deal. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, so fully furnished. <laughs> so wonderful. Gosh, I mean, see, people, I don't think people know enough that these things are being done. I don't think they get done enough, and I don't think you guys get enough recognition and thanks for what you do. And okay, so now 
for you, Ryan, I want to talk about you now because we're going to make it about you. Um, right. <laughs> what brought you there? Um, so way, way back when, when I was getting out, I decided I wanted to really help people. Uh-huh. And I liked science, so I decided I'm going to be a doctor. Apparently, here's a life pro tip for you. When you go to uh, undergrad to become a medical student, they actually want, like, more than a 2.5 GPA what? to get medical school. You mean, I know, right? You mean if you're going to, like, you know... Right? Well, what about if you just want to play a doctor on TV? Uh, apparently. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you know, hey. But, first of all, they should probably tell you these things before you start. So wow. So, that would have been helpful. Um, so, found they just out wanted the money. GPA, yeah. Right? So it took some years off, uh, started doing social work, you know, helping, I was working at a um, free clinic in Portland, Oregon called the Out, Outside In Clinic. Okay. We work with street kids and whatnot. Um, decided, you know what, maybe I'm not going to go back to school and spend a whole lot of my, getting my GPA up. Right. So started doing more, you know, social work style. Okay. I moved to Chicago a few years back. Um, wanted to continue the social work. Um, kept looking around, looking around. Nothing was opening up. Nothing opened up the road home. I applied. They very generously said, yeah, we're going to hire this guy. I don't know why. Because uh-huh. I totally, totally not qualified. But <laughs> no, I think you totally are qualified. Look at what you're doing, man. So, uh, that was about two years ago, a little over two years ago now that I started at road home. That's and look at what you've done so far. Look at the lives that you're impacting. That's mm-hmm. so awesome. Well, okay, so tell everybody about your military career. Oh, um, so how old were you when you went in? I it was on my seventeenth birthday. Ooh, yeah. You you talked to my son Mason a little bit. Yeah, you you two are gonna be friends, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up in a not so small town in Wyoming. It's actually the largest town in Wyoming, which means it's a pretty small town. Um, and there was nothing to do, so I was like, I'm going to the military. I uh, ended up joining the Marines, 17th birthday. Mm. Turned 18 in boot camp. Uh, first time I was really away from home. Wow. And then I got sent to Desert Shield to storm the day after Christmas in 1990. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right. Uh, spent about four months over there. Mm-hmm. Came back in late April. Um, did a few more deployments all up and down the East Coast. I actually went to the Great Lakes for a little while. Okay. Um, I got out because I was 21 and I figured, well, no one's going to tell me what to do. Apparently, they do tell you what to do when you're still out of the military. Um, probably should have told me that one too. <laughs> right? I know. Right. That's been my my mentality my whole life, though. You can't tell me what to do. Right. Wow. So um, after about nine months, realized, well, it was actually six months, like, okay, I should probably pay my bills. Um, I went back in. Um, at the time, the Marine Corps wasn't accepting any more prior service Marines, so you had to go to another branch. So <laughs> the Air Force wasn't accepting anybody if you got out of the military. If you... If you went in the Air Force at that time, you just had to stay in until you retired. That was the rule. Oh, wow. Right? Um, and since I was a Marine, or I am a Marine, um, the Navy really just wasn't an option because... Because it's yeah, the Navy. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. Um, so that left the Army. Did hey. three years in the Army. They wanted you. What is, what's that? They wanted you. They Uncle apparently Tim. wanted me. Yeah. You wanted um, yeah. Yeah. They wanted me, and they sent me to... What is generally regarded as the worst post on the planet for three years. That was really awesome. Thank you, Army. Where was that? The National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California. Well, it sounds like it would be nice. It does, um, except that um, it's, very, it's very close to another large uh, monument, also known as Death Valley. Ooh. Right? Okay, that's so... If you look at a map of California, there's a line between L.A. and Vegas, and in the middle of that line, there's a little town called Barstow. Yes. If you go 40 
Ten Mile Street, north of Barstow, there's kind of a black hole on the map. That would be Fort Irwin. Ugh. All right. It was 40 miles to McDonald's, so. 40 miles to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get any DoorDash there, I'm sure. No. Oh, my no. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, yeah, I'd right. be like not, I'd, I, I couldn't do it. So what no, did you do at Fort Irwin? Is that where you spent the whole three years? Did you That's deploy? That's my entire three years. Ew. In the army, yeah. You don't get out of order with it's kind of like, ugh. So, um, at that time, I was like, okay, this time I'm going to have a plan because I can't do another three years at Fort Irwin. Um, moved up to Portland, Oregon. Okay. Went to school at a place called Portland State University. Met some really fantastic people. Met some amazing professors. Um, got my butt kicked on all my classes. Thanks, Dr. Lutz and Organic Chemistry. <laughs> um, so not, yeah, that so would not be me. I couldn't do that. Oh, trust me. Dr. Lutz was just brutal. Um, nice guy. Nicest guy ever. Just completely brutal. Until he um, graded you, right? He's like, wait, yeah. I thought we were friends. No. Oh, no, there were no friends in Dr. Lutz's class. Mm. Uh, the best I ever got on one of his take-home quizzes was a 90, and that's because I missed two commas. Hmm. Right. Wow. <laughs> right. I was like, wow. This is gonna be rough here. Um And like so, you're really gonna use that because now we have, you know, our right. smartphones do everything for us. Exactly. Like no one's looking up big chemical formulas or whatever. Wow. But uh, yeah. So, um that's where I got my two point five GPA. <laughs> really rocking that. Yeah. Um yeah. And then well, you know the rest. Well, the abbreviated version, at least. The abbreviated version. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, Wyoming, born and raised. Family. Yeah. Well, you saw born, raised in Wyoming. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mom and dad, still there. Where's your family at? Uh, my sister, ironically, is in Seattle now. Okay. And my parents are in Wyoming still. They've been there since, I don't know, the mid 70s. Never left. Wow. Wyoming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's like Buffalo roaming area, right? Yes. Um, actually, like it's a tumbleweeds. city park. Oh, yeah, they're definitely tumbleweeds. A uh, city park, there's actually for the six Buffalo. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've never. So, wait, so if I said Wyoming. Let's see. Only thing that comes out of Wyoming is no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quote Steel Metal Jackets. Or no, it's not. No. It's Full Metal Jackets. No. Sorry. Full, yeah. Full Metal Jackets. Yeah, that would be Texas. That would be Texas. Oh really? Is sure. it Texas yeah. or Arkansas? Yeah. Any one of them, he'd use it. Yeah, but exactly. so getting out of Wyoming, I mm -hmm. they don't even have any sports teams, do they? We have the University of Wyoming. In fact, Josh Allen, University of Wyoming. Place to go like number five in the draft this year. So, really? Winner. Yeah. Speaking of the draft, mm -hmm. get any plans? Uh, I am hoping to go visit uh, a friend of mine, Greg, down at Pro versus G.I. Joe's at the draft. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Oh, I know. And so we are going to actually, we're going to invite Greg on here. I think we're going to talk to him next week about Pros versus G.I. Joe's. Just another great program. Yeah. It's helping vets. And here's what I love is that you, um, the Lone Survivor Foundation, everybody, F word. Um, I know. Um, I mean, we're, we're all looking to team up and do some great fundraising, put some good things together for some of the vets, some retreats, um, getting the vets. I mean, yeah, I mean, we want to get some vets down to the draft party. I think, yeah, you know, how about, like, vets' ex-wives? I, I, could, I could go for that. <laughs> is there one? Is there something for me? No. But, um, no, I mean, I, the draft party, I mean, there's going to be all kinds of really fun things coming up. Um, I do want everybody to know, though, that we're not just going to be saying, here, send us your money. I mean, we're never going to stop that. But, I mean, we're going to be doing some different things that are fun, that are going to make a difference, that 
that the public is going to like, that the vets are going to like, the families are going to like, and we're going to be able to do some things. Um, I'm thinking some online auctions. We're going to get some really great athletes, vets involved and making a difference. And, and like I said earlier, too, if you have a pet or you know of a dog that would be a great prospect, I I want them to get a hold of you because I, I just think it's um not only is it, it saving the vet, but I mean there's a lot of instances where it's gonna save the pet. Oh absolutely. So that's really good. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so um Chicago, how long have you lived in Chicago now? Uh, about seven and a half years now. What's the craziest thing you've done down there? Because I love it. You what? know I call you know I call it Chicago, so I, I have do nothing know you but call fun. Chicago. Yeah. Uh, what is the craziest thing I've done in Chicago? Well, that's a great question. I don't know if I have my crazy days are over now or whatnot. Um, you gotta have uh, some fun stories. I do. Um, usually they involve the wheel stuff, though. Um, <laughs> so, I just wonder if my friends will talk to me after I tell some of these stories. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have to hold off on these stories for now when I think about, like, which one would be appropriate. Okay. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing, folks. The reason why I call it Chicago was uh-huh. my dearest friend, Amy, who literally just got back from Cabo. With, she went ahead to go without me. Um, uh-huh. not, not happily she went, but, you know, somebody had to yeah. do it. I had to stay home. But, um... We get to Chicago, and I found out, wait, how late are the bars open? I'm like, oh, my God, it's like Cabo. It's Chicago. I have so many stories that I wish I could remember I could tell you. <laughs> but it was absolutely such a blast. And, I mean, there's some great people down there. Some people that, you know, we wanted, you know, the Gail Sayers Foundation, they've done some great things down in Chicago. And, um I I know I've I, you've had the chance to meet um, their son, and uh, we're looking at uh, possibly teaming up with them too. So I think we're all together going to just uh, make some big differences. But oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, I think oh, where's my favorite place I've been to down there? You know, I, there's a place called the Lodge. Have you been there? Yeah, the Lodge is awesome. I know. So, right. The last time I was down there. No, was it? Yeah, I think, well, it was maybe time before last. My 23-year-old son scolded me. Scolded me. Mom, let's go! <laughs> I'm going, hey, no! You're not going back yet? Yes! I'm tired! I'm like, I am 30 years older than you, and you want to go back? Come on! <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> but that's how I get when I get down there, Ryan. So just know, next time. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll go to one of my favorite bars. My buddy Chaps uh, always goes to this bar. It's called Butch McGuire's. So that's just a fantastic place to go. And then we'll uh, hit up a place called Punch House. Punch House. Which is, yeah. Which is, that's like the place with the, pu- is that the place with the punch you told me about? Yeah, the ridiculous punch that nails you. Yeah, that's the place. All right. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, the sailfish on the wall. That's pretty <laughs> awesome, too. I love it. I love it. All right, everybody. So, our furry friends. F, F, F the snow outside. But you know what? My friend, Mother F word, Ryan, is yeah, making yeah. such a great job with our vets. With our other friend, Toriano, where are you? I, you know, I, I would think he's totally jet lagged just getting back from Spain. You think? Yeah. I would think. I, yeah, I think so. I mean, he's probably still over in Spain. Right. Metaphorically, yeah. All the right. rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's, anyway, um, I've been taking this uh, <clears throat> throat spray, and it's making, <clears throat> it's making my tongue fat. That's why I'm like having a hard time saying words. Um, oh, is that what we're going with this week? That's okay. what we're going with this week. <laughs> That's right. But 
Ryan. Again, thank you so much. Roadhomeprogram.org. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you so much. This is the F word. Thank you, Ryan. Talk to you next. I'll be back, Gabby. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.